Have a look at these two fridges. Do you notice anything different? At a glance, both fridges are identical and stocked with the exact same products. But if you look a little closer, fridge A is stocked with well-known household brands and fridge B is stocked with what is classed as supermarket copycat brands. And the undisputed king of the supermarket copycat brand is without doubt Aldi. The items in the fridges look almost identical and it's not just in the fridge, it's everywhere around the house, from snacks to soap, pain relief and even baby food. How is this possible? Isn't there protection for brands against this? What about trademark? Why don't the brands they so blatantly base their products on sue them to make them stop? As a designer who has produced work for some of the brands they copy, the first time I walked into an Aldi I was stunned. How are they getting away with this? To me it's a case of clear and blatant theft of another company's intellectual property and must be a trademark infringement of some description. Well, to answer this question, we first must look at what a trademark is and how they work. The trademark goes all the way back to medieval times where craftsmen begun stamping their products with their names, initials or unique symbols. It would give the buyer an assurance to the quality of the product and allow them to show off their new item to their friends as being, for example, from a certain blacksmith who is held in high regard or has developed a new way of making metal stronger. It also allowed products to be sold by people who were not the original manufacturer, as even if the item were made in England, it could be sold to someone in France with the buyer having confidence that the item was genuine. The main function of any trademark is to indicate a product's origin to consumers. In today's modern world, companies employ the same logic. They use logos to mark their products and services. Around these logos, they build a brand, and upon that brand, their trading reputation and goodwill will be attached making their trademark one of their most valuable assets. We the consumer choose products based on these brands and the carefully curated values they represent. Companies know how important brands are to the consumer and therefore they spend billions building and marketing their brand, sponsoring events and using celebrity endorsements that they feel reflect these brand values. They even pay millions for manicured product placements in movies and TV to link their brand with the values of certain characters. Because companies work so hard and spend so much money building their brands and giving it value, they are fiercely protective of them and this is where registered trademarks come in. You can trademark pretty much anything, a logo, a shape, a colour, a combination of colours, a pattern and even a smell. Once legally registered, it allows the brand to stop others from using the same or confusingly similar name or logo on their own products. However, although it is relatively easy to trademark a unique logo or brand name, the elements around the logo are much harder to trademark, and this is where the genius of Aldi comes in. They understand this fine line, what items are trademarked and what items of the brand aren't. For example, a colour. Although you can trademark a specific colour, and many brands have, with food items, colours also represent flavours and food types. And it's this knowledge that allows Audi and other supermarkets to get around trademark. Audi themselves say, we use market cues to ensure that our consumers understand what they are buying. Those cues help customers to navigate the supermarket, but are never used to mislead customers. And it's these design cues that are so key to the design of their copycat packaging. With all that in mind, let's take a look at a bottle of world-renowned Hellman's mayonnaise as inspiration and build our copycat version. Heinz have a patent on this bottle, but we don't want to copy it anyway. We just need one that's similar, with the cap at the bottom. Easy enough. The main colour needs to be white, and that's okay, as white is synonymous with mayonnaise, so we're all good there. The word real can't typically be trademarked in this instance, so we can take that and use an almost identical font. Theirs is in blue, so ours should be too. But let's make it slightly darker, as that exact blue is one of their brand colours. Mayonnaise, that's the food type, so we're fine there. The next main element of their branding is this big yellow square. Let's take the square, again change the colour and shape slightly, and it's positioned so we're on the safe side. The eggs. They don't own all pictures of eggs, and eggs are one of the main ingredient in our product. So if we get our own egg picture, we're fine. And finally the logo. Theirs is curved at the top and the bottom. So let's just curve ours at the top and use the darkened blue again. The font. They use their own Hellman's brand font but finding something that's really close to it is easy. Now for the name. Whatever name we pick, it must also be reminiscent of the famous brand we are trying to imitate. Wellmans? That sounds good, but it's too close and will get us into trouble. 
So what about Bramwell's? Finish it off with the legal product information and we're good to go. You see, in reality, they don't look identical, yet you know it's trying to be Hellman's mayonnaise. That is because if I asked you to think of any product and draw it, how much would you get right? How close to the actual real thing would it look? Your memory of an item is just a snapshot of the product. Maybe a main color and the rough shape and font of a logo? Your brain only remembers the design cues of an item. So making a copycat replica that is completely legal isn't that hard. Here's a bottle of Heinz ketchup that we all know, correct? Wrong. It is in fact the Aldi copycat. And here's the real bottle of Heinz. You see they have taken the main design elements and cleverly made them fit that same snapshot you have in your head. And this is exactly what Aldi do across their entire product range. Get the packaging as close to the original and then add a clever name. Nurofen, Hedofen. Lurpak, Norpak. Nutella, Natoka. Mini eggs, Mini chocolate eggs. Molten brown, Abbott broom. Corona, Carista. And my favorite, their version of Kellogg squares, oblongs. So has Aldi ever successfully had their wrists slapped? Only twice. Most recently in 2014, the Saucy Fish Company won an injunction against Aldi for copying their packaging design. And as packaging copying goes, I would say this was actually quite restrained for Aldi. It's no way near as bad as, say, their shredded wheat copycat. The reason this injunction was granted was because the Saucy Fish Company had trademarked their color combinations along with their logo. The case was eventually settled out of court. So a game-changing win for team brand? Well, in fact, Audi just updated the packaging, taking away the trademarked colors to a new design that, in my opinion, is actually closer to the real product. The more playful logo, the fish icon, and they even added in the co as one final poke in the eye. So is there anything a brand can do? Recently, the British beer company Brewdog took a different, more modern approach. When upon learning that Audi had released a copycat of their best-selling punk IPA, the Audi version being amusingly named Anti-Establishment IPA, the Brewdog PR team got out in front and proactively called them out on Twitter saying they were going to release a copycat version of the Aldi copycat version called Yaldi IPA. And after a comical back and forth on Twitter, the two brands agreed to partner and release the beer for real. A win-win for both companies and a few million pounds worth of free PR along the way. So is any of this fair? On one side, you have a company essentially copying everyone else's homework and getting an A star. Other companies spend billions building a reputation and a brand that Audi leech off. For example, Kraft Heinz spend $1.4 billion a year on marketing their products around the world, whilst Audi spend a minute fraction of that, and yet are one of the fastest growing supermarket brands in the world, with over 11,000 stores in 20 countries and an annual turnover of more than 50 billion thanks in no small part to their copycat products. But on the other hand, we the consumer are getting these copycat products at bargain prices, precisely because Aldi don't need to pass the exuberant cost of marketing their products onto us the consumer. And some of these products are in many cases better than the real products they are recreating. Also, you can argue that Aldi are forcing brands to innovate and create new products. And it's this innovation that keeps us moving forwards. In every industry, if someone is doing something new and better, everyone else will follow, forcing the next step or leap forward in innovation. Just look at how Apple's design philosophy has changed the world of electronics in the last decade, forcing even their arch nemesis Microsoft to bite the bullet and change their whole identity to be closer affiliated to what Apple is selling. In the book Knock Off Economy, How Imitation Sparks Innovation by Cal Rustiella and Christopher Sprigman, they expertly argue that creativity can not only survive in the face of copying, but it can thrive. So what is the future for Aldi and their copycat products? Well, in the last year, Aldi have begun to tone down their copycat branding, maybe as a reaction to the lawsuits, or possibly as they go through a time of rapid expansion, they want to appear to be more of a legitimate retailer and appeal to the middle to upper class shopper who wouldn't be caught dead with a knockoff product in one of their cupboards. What do you think? Are copycat products wrong? Have you ever bought a copycat product by mistake? Do you like the copycat version or would you be too embarrassed to buy them? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Behind Designs. The channel has really started to grow in the last month, so please make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe so we can keep it on the up and up. Thanks so much for all the support.